welcome to another hiking gear video. Now, if you're the kind of person who's watching this, you've probably seen other gear videos on YouTube. And if not, then YouTube's gonna start recommending them to you because, well, because you watched this. Everyone recommends different stuff. And the primary reason for that is that everyone has different hiking gear needs based on the type of hiking they're doing, where they're going, the time of year they're hiking, how long they're hiking, all these different factors. What I'm gonna recommend, almost guaranteed, isn't gonna be the exact right list for you. But even so, I hope that at least some of the things in this video will be helpful. Now, I'll say that most of my hiking is done in Colorado, in the Rocky Mountains, and mostly when I'm backpacking, it's mostly in the summer. Now, when I say summer, it can still get down below freezing, and so it's it's very much mountain weather. And I, I tend to run pretty cold, so I err on the side of bringing more layers and warmer gear. One other probably unique factor is that I often bring up to 15 pounds of photo and video gear, which is very heavy, it's a lot. One of the projects that I'm working on is using an old Hasselblad medium format camera, and it's really heavy. So it makes sense for the rest of my gear to be as light as is reasonably possible. So inevitably that means that a lot of this stuff is pretty expensive. So just know that going in. This is what works for me. It's what I'm gonna be using in the 2021 hiking season. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with the big stuff. Big stuff like backpack, tent, sleeping bag, pad. The, the big stuff. Okay, backpack. I, I use the Hyperlite, Hyperlite Mountain Gear. What is this? The Southwest 3400, I think. All their packs are pretty similar. This one has the mesh pockets, and it's just a little bit taller so that I can carry more stuff if I need to, but it rolls down nicely. The I love this backpack. It's really light, pretty much waterproof. You wouldn't like throw it in a river, but you know it's going to survive any rainstorm. It's very simple, very minimalist, incredibly rugged. I think the only downside is that the the back panel doesn't have any, like, like some of the Osprey ones have a mesh thing that pulls away from the backpack so that you get some airflow. This one's just a sweat machine. So my back is just drenched after, after hiking with this at any length in any weather. That's my only downside with it, but it's kind of a trade-off that I knew going in. Super lightweight, super rugged, and waterproof. It can carry a pretty heavy load if I'm going to bring in my camera gear with me. I'm going to put a list to all of the gear down below um, with some details and where to buy it and all of that. So, tent. I use the, it's the Sierra Designs High Root 1. It's a couple years, I think this is the model from a couple years ago. They don't make this one anymore. There's a newer one, I think it's blue instead of like a reddish orange. So this tent is amazing. It's pretty weird. It, it uses trekking poles to set up instead of poles. So if you're not a trekking pole person, this doesn't make sense. It takes, it's harder to set up than most tents, at least than most like freestanding tents you would get at REI. But in general, I've been in some pretty heavy rainstorms with it and had zero complaints. Best tent I've ever owned. Sleeping bag. This is big, but it compresses down quite small. You should make sure that you store your sleeping bags in a big bag like this. This is just a down backpacking quilt. So it's basically like the top half of a sleeping bag. Like the, the top half, the half that covers your body, not like the torso. But it's just like a, a down sleeping bag, but there's no bottom to it. So you save that bit of weight. And then usually your body is squishing that part under you anyway when you're sleeping, uh, if you have a sleeping bag. And so that part doesn't help insulate, it's just kind of wasted weight. It took me a while to get used to sleeping in a quilt because it got, I move around a lot and it got a little bit drafty. But once I realized that there are some straps that it comes with, I'm never going back. It's so much lighter, it's really comfortable. I'm kind of a stomach sleeper or a side sleeper. And so it's just overall a better experience than a sleeping bag. It's equally as warm. This is a 20 degree bag. I think I said it's from Enlightened Equipment. Someone on, on the internet told me that if you have a dark color on, on one side, then if it gets wet, it'll dry faster because the black or the gray absorbs the sun. And then if you have a bright orange on the inside, then if you're ever in an emergency, you can lay this out as like an emergency beacon. I don't, I've never had to use that fortunately, but. And then finally in the big stuff is my sleeping pad and a pillow. I'd bring a small little Sea to Summit inflatable pillow. Um, that's somewhere in the bag with the sleeping bag. But for sleeping pad, I use the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. That sleeping, it, it's kind of crinkly and noisy, but it's just absolutely wonderful. It's super warm um, and really thick. I sleep amazingly on that. So that's the big stuff. Next we'll move on to the clothing. First, the, the clothes that I'm 
wearing hiking. Um, I like it like a sun hoodie, mostly because I'm really pale and get sunburned super easily. I got this one from Arcteryx because uh, everything from Arcteryx fits me really well. I'm a convert with the sun hoodie. It's long sleeve in the summer, but I, I just don't like putting sunscreen on and then getting in my sleeping bag like that. So even though it looks pretty dorky, I like wearing the sun hoodie, you know, and sometimes I don't always wear the hood, but it's nice to at least have the long sleeves on. And then if I'm in, you know, above tree line for a long time and in an, an exposed place, throw the hood on. Even so, I usually have a, just a baseball hat. That's nothing fancy. That one didn't come from REI. It's just a hat. Best hiking pants I've found for someone like me who's tall and pretty skinny. I really like the Prana Bryans. Not because they're kind of named after me. It's B-R-I-O-N. But just because they fit really well. Really stretchy, comfy. I've probably had these for three years now. And they're the only hiking pants I own. And they're wonderful. Underwear. I, I like the Icebreaker boxer briefs. They're merino wool. You know, if I'm only going to bring one pair of underwear. This is getting into the too much information territory. But we're here. You're 10 minutes into the video. I think we have a connection at this point. On a short trip, I'm usually just bringing one pair of underwear. And wool will last the two or three days, no problem. Um, wool is magical. And, you know, the more stuff that I can have, you know, touching my skin, like the, the base layers made of wool, the better. Speaking of wool, these are socks. They're from Smart Wool. I like the short little running socks because my feet get really sweaty and I don't, I, I want super thin socks. Again, wool is just great. Don't wear, don't wear cotton in the backcountry. Make, you know, synthetics, wools. Those kind of things. What are these called? No idea. I'll look it up. Uh, orange and black super light trail runners. I like the, again, because I my feet get pretty sweaty and sweaty feet means blisters. I like a lightweight shoe that has a lot of ventilation. They're not waterproof, which is, uh, there's a bit of a debate in the community on waterproof shoes versus not waterproof shoes. But at least in Colorado, when we get typically like an afternoon rainstorm in the, in the summer, we don't very often get an all day Pacific Northwest kind of rain situation. So my feet tend to stay pretty dry. And then I've got like a solution for if they do get wet and I want dry feet later in camp. We'll talk about that in a bit. I have no issues with ankle support with these. My pack's fairly light. Um, I, I could talk for a long time on, on trail runners versus hiking boots. This is what works for me. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments or in an email and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. Sunglasses, these are just cheap ones from REI. I would have recommended them, but they they broke on a hike today. So don't don't buy those. As far as extras go of any of that, literally the only thing that I have duplicates of that kind of stuff is an extra pair of hiking socks so that when my feet get too sweaty, I can just swap out for a dry pair of socks. Shirt, pants, underwear, I'm just bringing just the one set of those, which for a short, you know, one or two night trip is fine. I'm usually by myself. And if not, you know, everyone smells when you're backpacking and I'd rather smell a little bit. You're going to anyway. I'd rather smell a little bit than carry the extra weight. So, okay. Let's talk about bad weather clothes, like a rain jacket, rain pants, warm gear, that kind of stuff. So I think these are Costco brand actually, but I'll just usually throw in a pair of thicker wool socks like this, mostly to sleep in, um, and just kind of around camp if it's chilly. A beanie. This is from Finister, I think, British company, but it's not the warmest beanie out there. I just already had this one. I love this jacket. I think it's the Cerium, Cerium SV. Down jacket, super compressible, super light for how warm it is. Um, there's lighter down jackets out there for sure, but I've never come across one that's this warm that's, you know, like a pound. It's pretty crazy. It's ridiculously warm. I can be well below freezing in like a t-shirt and this and be pretty comfortable. A lot of people will bring a lighter one and then just more layers, but I, I kind of just like this one. It's super warm and it's pretty lightweight. So overall, the whole system is lighter because of this. This is mostly for when I'm stopped, when I'm you know, at camp or in the morning. This is great for me. Um, again, I run pretty cold, so I'm gonna bring a pretty warm jacket. Merino wool thermals, so bottoms and tops. One of these is from REI and the other smart wool. Ridiculously warm. I think that's the wool and they're just a bit thicker. I love them. It keeps, you know what long underwear is. It keeps me warm. And then if it's at all chilly and I'm hiking and need something beyond just the t-shirt, the I'll wear that as well. So I'll bring a, a rain jacket. It's the Arcteryx something or other. Alpha something? 
I'll put it on the screen. Arcteryx rain jacket and then Arcteryx rain pants. Depending on the forecast, you know, for a short trip, the weather forecast is going to be reliable enough to tell me if it's going to rain all weekend. I'll bring the pants or not, depending on what the forecast looks like. Okay, now we'll talk about just kind of the rest of the stuff, the small things. Um, we'll start with food and water stuff. I'm not going to talk about the actual food that I'm bringing backpacking. I might do that another day, but to cook that food, I, I'll bring a jet boil. It's not the lightest stove out there available, but it boils water ridiculously quickly. And for that, I think it's worth it. You can get my coffee in the morning a little quicker. The, the igniter went out, so I bring a, a small Bic lighter, but it's good to bring one of those anyway. And then I'll just eat out of this or out of the freeze-dried packet and then drink my coffee out of the, the cup that's attached to the bottom. So that's a lot of tools in one. A spoon. I like the long handle spoon because you can reach into the, the freeze-dried food packets or into the jet boil a little bit better without getting your hand all up in there and getting it dirty. As far as water, I'll usually bring an empty smart water bottle. They're cheap and really, really robust for the weight. The Sawyer Squeeze, which is my, my filter of choice, screws directly on, on there. You put the, the water out of a creek or a lake in there and just drink directly out of it or squeeze it directly into your, your cook pot. Um, I like that. It works well for me. I will also usually bring an extra one liter platypus water bladder either in case I just need to carry more than one liter of water at a time or just as a backup in case this explodes or something. Storing food, Colorado's bear country, it's not like, it's just black bears. I mean, you gotta be careful with them, but it's not nearly as risky as if you're in grizzly bear country. So unless the place requires it, um, what is it, Rocky Mountain National Park and the Maroon Bells Wilderness require a bear can it's hard to read into the rules. It's a bit vague. I think they'll allow this um, Ursac. It's a Kevlar-esque kind of bear-proof soft bag instead of the hard bear canister. I've got one of those too, but it's bulky and really heavy. So usually I'll bring this. I'm pretty sure that the Maroon Bells Wilderness will allow this. And I'm pretty sure the Rocky Mountain National Park started allowing this if you buy the hard aluminum liner. I haven't backpacked in Rocky Mountain National Park yet, and I've only been to Maroon Bells once, and I'm pretty sure this is allowed. So I will bring this anywhere else just because it's it weighs like eight ounces. It's not that heavy, and it's just a, a nice safeguard against bears or really any other critters that are going to get into my food. So I'll put the food in a, I think it's called a lock sack. They're supposed to be odor-proof Ziploc bags, essentially. So that makes it where the animals can't smell your food in the first place. And then if they do, they can't get in because it's basically a Kevlar thing. The nice thing about this is that you don't have to like tie it up into a tree like you would with a bear bag. You just tie it to a tree. And then even if a bear sees it and tries to get in it, they can smash it and stuff, but they can't get in. It's, it's essentially bomb proof. Trekking poles. I use these ones from Lakey. Lakey. Uh, like this. I've got the, the snow baskets on because it's because it's winter and it's snowy. In the summer those are off but they fold up nicely which is uh, good for if I'm ever hiking internationally and uh, it fits into any suitcase. So tricking poles, not for everyone. I really like them and my tent requires them so I have to bring them anyway. Let's see I'll bring this small little anchor battery charger. I think it's a 5,000 milliamp hours. It'll charge my iPhone a few times and the, uh, the camera and what, whatnot. I got these t small little USB plugs, one for an iPhone lightning cable and then a, a micro USB, I think. This one will charge pretty much all of my other electronics. I've got a bigger one for longer trips, but I'll just bring this small battery pack for a weekend trip. I'll bring an emergency Mylar blanket. I've never used one before, but it weighs pretty much nothing and it's a nice option to have in case I ever get in trouble. First aid kit. My first aid kit is pretty minor because I'm not a doctor. I'm not really gonna be able to treat much anyway. So I've got duct tape, which can solve most things. Ibuprofen, anti-diarrheal pills, what is it? Neosporin, gauze, and then repair kit for my sleeping pad is in here too. It's a, a fix me and a fix gear kind of thing. And then some moleskin kind of stuff. Chapstick. A little sunscreen. This stuff smells like, does it smell like Fruit Loops or something? Yeah, this stuff is really fragrant and I'm sure just 
the bears would love this. So I need to find a better sunscreen one, but it's nice and small. Toilet paper, hand sanitizer, small Victorinox Swiss Army pocket knife. These are nice because it's got a knife, a uh, nail file, screwdriver. It's a Swiss Army knife. It's got lots of tools. The scissors are nice for opening things. I've never needed more of a knife than this in the backcountry. I know it's tiny, but I'm just opening stuff and dealing with like, I don't know, small things. What else? Uh, headlamp. This one's nice because it's USB rechargeable. So I, you know, if, if it happens to be low on battery, I can recharge it with uh, this USB charger. This one's super bright. You know, if I'm hiking at night, this is plenty bright. If you know you're not going to be hiking at night, you can go with one that's not as bright. Um, bandana. I used to always say, you know, I'd throw this in just in case, but I never used it. Now I use this as like a, a COVID like a face mask thing when I'm backpacking and don't want to bring an actual face mask. Um, so who knew? All right. These are bread bags, just like the disposable plastic bags that a loaf of bread comes in. This is, I think I got this from Andrew Skirka. I don't remember. Basically because I'm not bringing waterproof shoes, if it does rain a lot and my feet get wet and I want to have essentially a dry pair of shoes and socks to change into it at camp. I've got dry socks, but then if I put those in dry sh in my wet shoes, they'll, they'll get wet. And so what I'll do, and I don't do this very often, only if it's really, my shoes are really wet and it's cold and I want to dry my feet off. I'll put the dry socks on and then my feet in these bread bags. And then all of that feet and bread bag and sock mixture into the shoes. And it basically makes the a waterproof barrier between your socks and your shoes. I wouldn't hike in this. That would be really uncomfortable and sweaty. But around camp, it basically is the lightest pair of camp shoes that you can have. I don't use it very often because it doesn't rain that much in Colorado that often in the summer. But uh, I've used it a couple times and it, it, it works well. You know, I, I, I've at least tested it out and know that it works. All this small stuff goes in these two stuff sacks, both from Hyperlite Mountain Gear. One's a waterproof bag and one's just a regular one. The, the stuff that I don't need to be easily accessible goes in here and that goes inside my backpack. And then the stuff that I want more easily accessible, like a toilet paper first aid kit, goes in this waterproof one and in an outside pocket. That's pretty much the extent of my organization. Uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, in a plastic bag in case they explode. Poop shovel. This is the, what's it called? The deuce. I got the number three because it's a little bit um, stronger because the, the ground out here tends to be pretty rocky and um, I don't want to break this. Um, but a shovel is important for proper leave no trace. I've got a Garmin InReach Mini satellite beacon. It's kind of expensive, a few hundred bucks. And then it's like a, I don't know, seven or $10 a month subscription to be able to essentially connect this to your smartphone via Bluetooth and then send texts via satellite. So pretty much from anywhere in the world to anyone. And for me, especially because I do quite a bit of solo backpacking, this is worth it. An umbrella. I know this is bad luck to do, but whatever, it's 2020, what else can happen? Um, it's just a, it's a super light backpacking umbrella. It weighs eight ounces. It's the, the Mylar, the shiny Mylar outside is for sun protection. I don't use it for that very much because I'm not hiking in the desert, but it's a nice option to have. Basically, this is awesome for hiking in the rain. A rain jacket will keep you dry, and I, I bring one of those. But then the rain's still just kind of on you, and you're not really getting out of the rain. But this is for, you know, a half a pound, unless the forecast just says no rain at all, which... In Colorado in the summer, it rains most every afternoon in the mountains. So I'll bring this, and it's it's wonderful. I wasn't sure at first, but I'm a convert. This is generally worth the extra eight ounces, unless I'm really trying to cut weight. That's pretty much it. I'll bring my my iPhone. Uh, what is this, iPhone 10? Yeah, just the iPhone that I have. Uh, wallet and keys, because I can't leave those in the car. A belt sometimes, if my pants are feeling kind of loose. Um, a friend occasionally, you know, when we're not quarantining. Oh yeah, I'll also bring 15 pounds of camera gear, but that's kind of the topic.
for another video for another day. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do so. I've got lots of hiking, photography, and travel videos coming up. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.